for our theme music. Every good hero should have some. All right, everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's a special Saturday show. Don't do a lot of Saturday shows, but I got up early. I don't know why, but I'm up early. I want to talk about the Giants. I want to talk about their schedule in the second half of the 2021 season. I want to move forward. I, I see a lot of uh, schedule predictions on the Twitter sphere, and, and I just have to laugh when I see them because evidently some people are just not watching the same team or looking at the actual teams the Giants are going to be playing without the rose-colored glasses on which is fine, but when you're thinking the Giants are only going to have two losses in the second half of the season, uh, you're, you're, not actually, you're, not actually creating, uh, you're not actually creating content or memos or whatever the hell they're called, or memes or whatever the hell they're called. You're, 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 you're creating something for likes and clicks, and we've said this a million times. So we, we always keep it honest. We keep, we keep it truthful here. We give you the best information that we have through the ability that we have. I want to talk about the Giants real quick, though. It's interesting. Uh, Thursday night, the uh, North Carolina-Pittsburgh game. Interesting. The Giants had uh, some scouts out there to take a look at both uh, Sam Howell and Kenny Pickett. You know, and it's uh, with Sal, you know, Howell's stock has been dropping significantly uh, lately, and Pickett seems to be a little bit on the rise, but I, I think that's just interesting. The Giants, are now, you know, they're basically just doing their due diligence and sending out these guys to take a look, you know, their scouts to take a look at everyone because you need to take a look at every expectation and every player that is on the market. Let's talk about the Giants scale. Giants are three and six right now. They could be, their record could be better. Actually, their record could be worse. So you, you need to think about that as both ways. But you need to look at this from the, the ability of the teams that they're playing in the second half and what their actual projected win total would be. I have it at seven. Vegas has it at between, I think it's seven as well. Um, but then I see these unrealistic expectations that Giants are going to lose two games in the second half. Let's look at the actual schedule and look at the teams that they're playing. You figure right off the bat, you're, you're going to, you figure right off the bat, you're, you, you may have a close game on Monday night, but you're going to, you're going to take a loss to the Bucks. I mean, that's, I mean, oops, I'm sorry, hitting the, uh, hit my microphone because I'm bringing out my piece of paper here. Uh, you figure out you're going to have a, at least, you're probably going to get a loss to the Bucks. If you, you could play well, you could play above expectations, but Tampa in all rights is a better team than the Giants. They have a better defense. They have a better offense. They're, they're wide receivers and their skill players are probably getting the Giants a little bit. I'm sorry, I get my paper. I'm being unprofessional. Uh, you, you figure their skill position players are a little bit better than the Giants, and you, you have to probably pencil that in as a loss. So we're going to pencil this as a loss. I personally predicted that the Giants were going to. Now we're going to get, I'm sorry, we're going to get into the November 28th game uh, against the Eagles. I predicted the Giants were going to sweep the Eagles because I thought the Eagles were going to be a horrid train wreck of a team. And honestly, they haven't been. Yeah, Jalen Hurts is up and down. He gets a lot of garbage touchdowns. But they, they, stay, they always seem to be in the game. I, I watch the Philadelphia games. I watch all of them. I have to. They're on my network. But they are always in the game. They always play hard. And you, you can never count them out. But we have them at home on the 28th. I think the Giants and the Eagles are about on the same par. I think, if anything, the Giants may be a little bit better. So you got to give the Giants the win. Then we jump into the venerable into Miami on December 5th game. I did a, do a podcast called NFL Talk from Across the Pond. Back in the last two weeks, or going on three weeks, I've been telling people, look out for the Miami Dolphins in the second half. Watch what they do. Their defense is not as bad as it's been playing. They have good players on defense. They have some skilled players on offense. They, are, they were well coached last year. They're, this was a team that I don't think played above expectation last year. I think they played to expectations. They added some talent in the draft. It, it just seems if you look at their schedule and look at their games, it just seems it's been a lot of bad luck and an inconsistent play at quarterback and also two again and injured. And then all of a sudden they start playing better. And I've been saying it now for the two weeks, and I believe they won two games in a row. They could easily have three more wins, the Dolphins. They just have some implosions, and I, I was going to blame a lot of it on Brian Flores, but he's starting to seem to right the ship. So after the emotional win against the Eagles, the Giants are going to go over into Miami. I'm sorry. I don't see this as a giant win. Do the Giants have the equal amount of talent that the Dolphins have? They might. 
but I also think the giant, uh, excuse me, the Dolphins are better coached. Not this, not this year, but I think they have a better coaching staff than the Giants do, even though the Giants have 497 coaches. So I'm sorry. I'm going to have to give us a loss in Miami. Then you're jetting across the coast over to the Chargers. This is going to be a tough game as it is because you're going to go from, you're, you're going from New York because they're not going to fly out right from Miami. You're going to fly back to New York and then you're going to fly over to Los Angeles. It's, it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough road to beat the Chargers. Uh, the duck plays well. He's turning it back on again. So I'm going to have to give, I'm giving them a loss. So I'm already at one and three for the, for the second half of the season. Then you get into the last games, which are four, I would say, winnable games. The Dallas game at home, you hope should be a win. You really do. You hope that should be a win. And, I, and I'm not sure where I want to pencil that in yet, because I want to see what Dallas is going to turn around. I want to see what the Giants do in those first four games. Because the Giants need to go at least two and two in those four first four games, and I have them going one and three. So we're going to hold off on that game. Now, the second Eagle game in Philadelphia, the day after Christmas. Hopefully, both teams are venerably fighting for that wild card spot. I'm sorry. In Philadelphia, day after Christmas, we always have problems in Philly. I'm got to pencil that in as a loss. So then you take a look at the Bears game. You're playing in Chicago. The last couple of times we played Chicago, we've lost in Chicago. It's the day after New Year's Day. I love how we have the day after Christmas, the day after New Year's Day. You hope you have to pencil that as a win. And I'm cautiously penciling that in as a win. So right now we got the Giants at two and four, not counting the Dallas game. The Washington game, yeah, we always beat Washington. Well, not always. But we we we've had you know it's still we've played them before we we've we had to beat them in overtime. Their defense is not playing expect, up to expectations. Their front five is just has not been the 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 purple people leaders going back to the Vikings from the seventies. They've been average at best. So all cautiously optimistic, I'm going to pencil, pencil that in as a win. So I have the Giants going three and four right now without counting the Dallas game. And I am, you know, and I'm going to cautiously optimistically. And again, I'm putting the fan. This is the fan hat on. I'm going to give them the win. So the giants are going to go four and four. I have them projected to go four and four their last eight games, which would then give them a record, (laughs) which they would then give them a total of seven wins. And I think that's what Vegas is looking at. I think it with the prognosticators that actually follow football beyond the Giants, look at other teams, are predicting the same thing. I always say you want you want to find uh, you want to find the best the best option and the best way to bet. I mean, excuse me, look at a game. A lot of times is to follow the money. I always tell people go to the, go to Vegas, see what Vegas is projecting, follow the money because their job is to take all emotions out of what they're projecting and predicting and projecting because of the fact that their job is to make money for the house. So they are going to make sure that they do beyond their due diligence to figure out these point spreads. That's why Vegas, Vegas, Atlantic City, and all these other places are still in business because they found a way and they look at all the information and they try to address it so the house makes money. I would be happy if the Giants went four and four at the end. Because I projected, I projected the team seven wins at the beginning of the season. I said potentially nine if we had a top five defense and a top 20 offense. And honestly, we don't have either of those right now. But I would be happy with a four and four finish of the season. Would I be happy in regards to that being the progression from last year, six and 10? No. I think any, I mean, to me, if, if, to me, if the Giants go four and four, Judge and Garrett are going to be, uh, Judge, Judge and um, Jones are going to be back. Does that fill me with confidence? A year three of Judge and Jones with no salary cap money? No, it doesn't fill me with confidence. <laughs> I'm, not sitting, I'm not sitting here going, I'm overly confident about that. Because <laughs> you know what? These guys have been on par on a lot of things. No, 
Not I'm cautious. I'm not. And, and like I said, I do find it interesting the Giants are scouting quarterbacks. And I understand, yes, they're doing their due diligence, but I do find that interesting. I would, I would be more concerned if they didn't go out and scout quarterbacks. We're going to have a big stream on Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, I know there's no giant game, but we're still going to do a giant stream. We're still going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we still have the jersey, the Daniel Jones toilet paper. I mean, jersey to give away. Uh, we also have the Eli Manning 2007 replica Super Bowl ring. We still need to give away. I don't know how we're going to do it yet. I think we're going to pick a game and do and then do our play. Uh, guess the score of that game. Uh, more likely someone's going to win because we're not picking on the Giants course. So. And I got them. This is Tim with the online Big Blue bringing you the best at New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, that's my theme music. Every good hero should have some.